From Stockholm, Sweden, this is CardioSource video news coverage of ESC Congress 2010. Well, it's Sunday here at the ESC, and uh, we have one of the late-breaking clinical trials that looks at the issue of genetic testing with clopidogrel. And I'm joined here with uh, Dr. Guillaume Paré from McMaster University, who presented one of the key new studies that looked at genetic testing and the relative benefit of clopidogrel as compared with placebo, the key information that we've really been waiting for. So welcome, Dr. Paré. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this study? that you carried out? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation. So what we've done is that we've looked at samples from the Cure Inactive studies. And so over 5,000 people from uh, Cure were included in our genetic study, whereby we've genotyped functional alleles of CYP2C19, and we've looked for effects on both um, efficacy and safety endpoints. And we've done the same in the active trials. So we've included uh, 1,100 patients that consented to genetic studies and look for effects of functional alleles of CYP2C19. So this is then the benefit and cure in unstable antigen non-STEMI of adding clopidogrel on top of aspirin versus aspirin alone. What did you find? So essentially, uh, the key findings is that there was no effect of CYP2C19 loss of functional alleles on efficacy or safety endpoints in either cure or active trial. So no difference in the relative benefit that between clopidogrel and placebo? So there was absolutely no difference in the relative benefit, uh, no evidence of heterogeneity, and in fact, loss of LL carriers in the CURE trial derive a statistically significant benefit of clopidogrel as compared to placebo. Well, you know, this is the key question. We had the FDA warning about um, the homozygotes or the, the poor re- responders. Did you look at those in particular that the FDA has called out as may be having reduced efficacy? So we did look at those. Uh, One of the issues with the poor metabolizer analysis is that only 2% of the population is poor metabolizer, at least in Europeans. And therefore, sample size was very limited, even though like the overall study was very big. So the short answer is that we didn't see any effect, uh, but then we might have been underpowered to see um, an effect. But if anything, in some cases, actually, they seem to derive an increased benefit as compared to others, but I think this is within statistical noise, though. Right. So no effect, meaning that there was no difference in the benefit. So same benefit even in the poor metabolizers or the loss of functional allele patients. Exactly. So they seem to derive the same benefit of clopidogrel as the other metabolizer phenotypes. Well, this obviously goes counter to what we've been thinking may emerge from that warning of reduced efficacy. What do you think the implications are of this? Well, I think our data certainly adds a layer of complexity to what has been already published. And I think, if anything, uh, I think it's a convincing argument to show that in these patient population, conservatively managed acute coronary syndromes and atrial fibrillation patient, genetic testing uh, perhaps should not be considered. But I think it also raises, you know, deeper questions about genetic testing and how can we translate the findings from one study to the other, as well as the issue was how how best to compare, you know, genetic results. Should we have a placebo group? What should be the comparator group there to ensure that uh, there's no uh, confounding? Well, I want to thank you very much. I think this is one of the most important papers uh, presented here at the ESC that gives the information we've really been looking for of whether there is or isn't, and they found there wasn't any impact of the genetic defect on the clinical benefit of clopidogrel in, as you pointed out, the conservatively managed patients. Uh, Whether this translates into the same for PCI-managed patients in a broader population or drug-eluting stented patients, we'll we'll have to see with other uh, studies. So for Cardiosource Video News, I'm Chris Cannon.